Hi, Jules from Charter Legal here. Today we are going to talk about why you need a will. Now, unfortunately, we're all going to die one day and during your lifetime, you would have accumulated assets. Your assets would consist of property that you bought, whether movable or immovable. Immovable property is land, buildings, farms, strata. Movable property may be your camera, it may be your desk, it may be your jewellery, it might be a motor car, it might be shares, it might be an interest you have in a business. So you need to make a will. Why do you need to make a will? Because if you don't make a will, your assets might land up going to people you don't want it to go to. Now for the purposes of this discussion, I'm going to go briefly through what you will need for a will and you can look at my presentation um, and link to it through SlideShare on my website on why you need a will. In your will, you'll have you as the testator or the testatrix, the person making the will. You'll appoint someone called an executor. An executor is a person who steps in your shoes when you pass on and administers your estate according to your instructions. Now, my suggestion is a nine times out of ten, a husband will appoint a wife or a wife will appoint a husband. In some instances, if the wife is a strong person or the husband is a strong person, that's fine. But if the person is emotional and they're likely to make decisions which might affect the family, well, it might be better to get someone who is not emotionally involved. For example, a spouse might decide to sell a property because they don't want to live in the same house they lived during their marriage. It's also good to have an alternative executor. So in other words, if your executor dies before you, you've got an alternative. For example, many clients nominate me as executor because they haven't got anyone in Australia and as a solicitor, I nominate my success in practice. So when I retire, I would appoint someone to take over my practice. Then you have what is called special bequests. Special bequests might be a mother wanting to leave jewellery to, to her daughters um, or a father wanting to leave his sports equipment to his sons. That is what's called a special bequest. Then you have the residue or the remainder of the estate, which consists of all those items I spoke about initially, your money, your cash at the bank, um, and that would be divided. Normally, in most circumstances, the husband would leave it to the wife and vice versa. And if the wife or the husband predeceases, it would go to the children when they reach a certain age. If the children are under a certain age, then it would go to an administrator, or should I say a trustee, who holds the money in trust on behalf of the children until they attain a certain age. Many people do it at the age of 21. I suggest the age of 25 because I do not believe children are mature enough to handle money when they are 21. But it's up to each individual. That in a nutshell is what you have in a world. There are many other intricacies and issues that should be discussed so if you need to update your will please make an appointment to see me and we'll go through it i don't know if you're aware but 70 percent of australians die without a will and i can assure you it becomes an absolute nightmare if you don't have a will because you could um, land up um, with your estate going to people you did not want it to go to because it goes via intestate succession and that's not your want. So be prepared. It's a fact we're all going to die. It's something we don't like talking about, so don't deny it. Get onto it and either come and see me about your will or go and have it seen to by another solicitor.